Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about the method of sections. So the method of sections is a process used to solve for forces acting on individual members in a truss. An example of a truss is shown below. Uh, it comprises entirely of two force members uh, and is a collection of connected bodies. So in this structure, again, all two force members, that means that all members are connected at only two points and all members are either in tension uh, or compression as shown in this diagram. More, the, more on this can be uh, found on the trusses page in the book. So as part of this assumption, we're also going to have all external forces must be supported at our pin joints uh, where the members are connected. All right, so the method of sections works on the following assumptions. Number one, the structure you're analyzing is in static equilibrium. So if the structures uh, were to be cut into sections, each of those sections would be in equilibrium. So if I cut it into a left half and a right half, the left half is in equilibrium and the right half is also in equi equilibrium. So when you cut through a member uh, in the structure, you're going to expose the internal forces in that member. So if we were to imagine cutting it into a left and a right half, right along that cut between the left and right, uh, we would have the tension or compression in those members that we cut uh, exposed uh, in our free body diagrams. So how this works is uh, in this following process. So we're going to step one, assign letters to all the joints we identify. So here I've got A, B, C, D, E, and F. Uh, and I would identify the joints by a single letter. The members are identified by the two joints they connect. So I'd have member AB uh, down here, member uh, AC right here, member BC right here, and so on. So after I assign letters, uh, I'm going to Step two, optional, I'm going to treat the whole truss as a rigid body uh, and solve for the external reaction forces. So imagine picking up the entire bridge uh, and I'm going to separate that from the foundation and solve for the forces that would be holding this whole bridge up. So draw your free body diagram of the truss as a whole, write out your equilibrium equations, so some of forces in the x, some of forces in the y, and some moments, and solve those equations for the unknown reaction forces. In this case, FAX, FAY, and FFY. All right, so you don't always have to do this, but this is often going to make uh, the analysis later on easier if you know what these reaction forces are up front. All right, so step three, we're going to imagine cutting the truss into two sections. So cut through members, we don't want to cut through joints, uh, and we generally want to cut through the members where we are asked to find the forces. So if I'm asked to find the forces in member BD and CE, I would probably want to cut right down through the middle. And we also want to try to not cut through more than three members for TD problems or more than six members for 3D problems, because we're going to get uh, three equations in 2D and six equations in 3D, so we want to try to create a set of solvable equations. So here I'm going to cut right down through the center. It cuts through BD, it cuts through CE, and it cuts through not more than three members. All right, so next up, we're going to draw one of the two halves separately and add the internal forces from each cut member. So I have the reaction forces and the load forces in there. Uh, and each member I cut, I'm going to assume tension. So FBD, FBE, and FCE are added. They are added in the direction uh, going from point B to D, going from the point B to E, going from point C to E, so along the direction of the truss. So we assume tension and we get, we'll get negative answers sometimes. That's going to indicate compressive forces in the members. But if we assume tension, just negative always means compression. So step five is we're going to write out the equilibrium equations, which is sum of forces in the X, forces in the Y, and sum of moments about some point. So y, some moments about some point. Uh, be sure to identify the point you're taking the moment about. So maybe here it'd be some moments about point B if I'm taking it about point B over here. So step six is simply to solve the equations. So I have three equations. Uh, here I've got two known values and three unknown values. So with these three equations for this half of the bridge, uh, I should be able to solve for these three unknowns. So that's all we have for a single kind of method of sections analysis. We can also extend the method of sections with a couple uh, of additional pieces. So sometimes we're asked to find the forces acting in specific members, but no one cut's going to get everything. So imagine we have uh, this kind of uh, power line gantry like we have here. 
and we're asked to find the forces in member AC, BC, CD, and CE. So basically everything around joint C over here. So no one cut is going to be able to make it through all of those, particularly if I can't cut through more than three members at a time. So I can do kind of two cuts. Uh, I can cut this way and then this way, uh, but there's no single cut that'll work. So there are two ways to address this situation where uh, the method of sections, just kind of the regular method is not going to work. Uh, and the two methods are to use the method of sections twice or to use the method of sections and then use the method of joints on top of that. So let's go through the first one, using the method of sections twice. So if one round of method of sections will not allow you to solve for all the unknowns, you can employ the method of sections repeatedly. So we can make one cut, do the analysis, make another cut, do the analysis again, and so on. Uh, so step one in this is always just to kind of do the method of sections. Uh, solve for one or more of the unknown forces you're looking for, uh, and you want to cut through no more than three members, uh, again, getting three unknowns for your three equations. So step two, once you have solved for those unknowns, use an alternate cut uh, and with the method of sections again to solve for different unknowns. So we can kind of get around our three unknowns limit here if we're cutting through a member that we've already solved for. So if it's a known value, it's not an unknown uh, in my situation. So I can cut through four members if I already know what the force in one of them is. So here I might uh, make one cut there uh, and find AC, BC and uh, BD, uh, and then I might make a second cut here, uh, and I would solve for CE, CD, and BD is already known again. So uh, two cuts, kind of run the method of sections twice to solve for all of the forces in AC, BC, CD, and CE, everything around point C. All right, the alternate uh, to this is using the method of sections and then the method of joints. So if one round of method of sections will not allow you to solve for all the unknowns, you can employ the method of sections and then switch to the method of joints uh, for the surrounding joints. So step one in this is to use the method of sections once, solve for one or more of the unknown forces you're looking for, and you want to get, again, cut through no more than three members, getting three unknowns for your three equations. After you do that, um, you can analyze a joint near the cut from the previous step. So you'll want to analyze a joint uh, just as you did in the method of joints problems. Uh, and you're gonna look at a joint where there's no more than two unknown forces acting on it. Uh, not necessarily two members connected there, but two unknowns. So here, how I might do this is if I'm looking at the same first cut, so I'm gonna do uh, cut um, horizontally like this, cut through AC, BC, and BD, solve for those three things. Uh, and then second, I would look at joint C. So I draw a free body diagram of joint C. Uh, I've got four members connected there, but I already know what AC and BC are. So I've only got two unknown forces, the force CD and the force CE uh, at that joint. So if I draw an, a free body diagram, write out my equilibrium equations, I could solve for those last two remaining unknowns, kind of with the method of joints at this point. All right, that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.